Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. This is the Q&A for last Friday's video, how to turn threads on tubing. And I think it was a really a great video. You guys gave some just great, great comments and really liked it. And there were some great surprises in there and some wonderful comments. And here's one from John C. Hi Dale. A few other YouTube machinists have been talking about cons cosine error. This video shows a good example of how cosine comes into play. And John, you are so right. Cosine error, in what he's talking about is, when I set my compound to 30 degrees on the lathe to come in for threading, that angle lessens how much I go in. And I was talking about moving in five thousandths, when in reality, it was never moving in five thousandths. Think of it this way, if I would have turned my cross slide at 90 degrees and turn the handle, well, it would only move 90 degrees to the left five thousandths. Well, that would never have moved it in. So you think about cosine area of it moving in this way. Well, what's interesting about this is, on my lathe being so out of alignment, well, in theory, John is correct, but on my lathe, it really doesn't apply. But I think John was nailing it on that one. Here's one from the Berkeley Gang, and, he's, and it's talking about putting a plug in the end of the tubing to help keep it round. Would adding a mandrel inside the tube have been an option? I think this would help overall rigidity. And he's so right. And what he's talking about is, so when you got a tube, I was talking about changing the outside if it was out of shape and rounding it using a ball bearing like this. And what he's thinking about doing is putting a mandrel inside it or some sort of surface to go inside the tubing to help not only bring it back into a perfect round shape, but also add rigidity to it. And he's so right. Some of the concerns I do have with it is, if it's too tight a fit, is it may expand the aluminum and cause you problems. Steel wouldn't be as much of an issue. So that's something to just watch out for when doing that. But the Berkeley Gang, I thought that was a great, great idea. Now, getting back to the ball bearing. Paul Lee, hi Dale, I really enjoy the OD rounding tool reveal tip. I have never seen anything like it. Well, I have to say, it came across by accident, Paul. What the ball bearing originally has been used for is to help bring apart into concentrics, concentrics, to help bring the part round into the jaw. So you know when you put a part into the three jaw chuck, it's sometimes a little out of round or wobbly. Well, what you can do is bring the bearing in and it'll help push and align the part in the chuck as you're turning it. Or I should say, as it's turning, it brings that part into round. It's very cool. Well, I had a problem where I had a tubing with a flange on it. The flange was all warped and twisted. Well, I put it in the lathe and I actually pressed this up against that flange and straightened it out and I went, Wow, that was kind of cool. It only took a few minutes. I was thinking I was going to have to build a whole new flange, weld it on there, whatever, and this straightened it out. Well, I also realized that when you apply it to tubing, it does the same thing. It will help reshape the tubing. Like I said, it's kind of like metal spinning. Another person mentioned, well, could you put it inside the tube and, and get it back round again? And the answer is yes. And again, it's very similar to putting a plug in it is that it may stretch your material, so you want to be very careful and very delicate when you do that. Here's another one I've set up. This one goes on the dovetail slides of my Loris tool post. And I saw this somewhere on YouTube. I thought it was just a great idea. And this does the exact same thing. It's just quick change. Very nice way of doing it. Now, something that intrigues several of you guys was the threading mic. And Philip DeBoer asked or said, I've never understood how these threading mics works since the opposite thread valley never lines up square to the place. And what he's talking about 
is when you're working with threads, you know, since they're at an angle, the high point here or the crest and the root don't line up, so it's very hard to measure because your mic actually has to go on and would end up going at an angle. And I kind of mentioned it a little bit in the video because I was working with a very, very fine thread. I think it was a 32 pitch. And it was very hard to get it to line up and look correctly. Well, the way a threading mic actually does it is it has an interchangeable anvil and spindle for the different thread pitches. So let me show you. If you look closely, you can see the spindle is pointed and, well, actually, let me go to a larger set. So there's whole different sets. This one here will do a thread pitch from 4.5 to 3.5. And you can see that they come together and they're able to, one is to go inside the root and one is to go inside the crest. And very cool. These mics are very pricey. That's why I've actually never talked about them because I don't want to tempt you guys that, you know, to buy one of these is very expensive. I stole this one. Um, I was at a swap meet. Stole it right off the table. Okay, no, I actually, uh, I did buy it, but I got it at a great, great deal. Another cool thing is, the spindle, of course, moves, but because of the different anvils and where they set up, there's also a way to adjust the anvil. So Philip DeBoer, great question. Someday I'll actually do a full video on how to operate that mic. They're very neat, and they sure make measuring threads a lot easier than the wire method. Time for a website update. I've got somebody on board to help out with mapping out the navigation to the website. Very excited about it because it's very complicated and it's such the foundation of getting a website to work properly and smoothly because it is very complicated and very challenging and well past my skill set. And the person I have on board, which is going to remain nameless, is has worked on several major retailers' website. You know those retailers that bring in hundreds of millions of dollars? Those. That's the caliber of talent that has been brought in. And I'm very fortunate that we get to have this person on board. So very excited about that. We got about 100, anywhere from 80 to 100 hours dedicated right now to just mapping out how the website is going to be navigated. So it's very, very cool. And now for the YouTuber of the week. YouTuber of the week is Trainman4602. Now, I really enjoy his videos. I think he has a teaching style that is very unique. I will warn you guys, though, it may not be to your style, but he's got such great information. He has about 7,000 subscribers. He's been doing these for seven years. He has over 200 plus videos. He uploads a video about every, let's see, two about every month. His camera work is just nice, simple. Here's the camera, here's the tripod, and he talks to you and tells you the thought process behind what he does. And his subjects are live steam engines. So he makes the model steam engines that I find so amazing. He's actually gone to museums, gotten the original plans, and scaled those down and made replicas of those steam engines. And those guys amaze me. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, live steam engines. You look at the detail and they are stunning. I do not have that patience. I can't even imagine trying to put one of these together. But Trainman4602 does an amazing job. He also sells a lot of the parts. He does castings. He does mass production of these parts. So when he talks, he's got a lot of information and a lot of experience backing up what he talks about. So I want you to go check him out. Again, it's Trainman4602. 
All right, guys, give me some thumbs up if you like this video. Also remember, there's a video always released on Friday, and the Q&A is that hopefully that following lens Wednesday as the schedule permits, and it has for the last two months now, I think, and you guys seem to really enjoy the Q&A. Please leave your comments. I try to read all of them. I also try to reply to all the comments. All right, guys, until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.